Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the deep neck muscles. Let's get started. The splenius capitis, levator scapulae, and scalenus are three deep muscles that make up the side of our neck. Let's look at the splenius capitis first. It originates in the center of the spine from the seventh cervical vertebra down to the fourth thoracic vertebra. The muscle comes up to insert into the bottom of the mastoid process. Next, let's look at the scalenus. It originates on the side of each of the neck vertebra from the second to the seventh. Each section comes down and inserts as a unified shape on top of the first rib, taking up the back half. And last, the levator scapulae sits in between these two muscles. It originates on the side of the first four neck vertebra, just in front of the scalenus. The muscle spirals down to insert into the top inside edge of the scapula. When seen like this, the muscles look complex, but the origins and insertions will be completely hidden under the sternocleidomastoid on the front and the trapezius on the back. What shows up on the surface appears like small cables in between these other neck muscles. From a side view, the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius create an angle that point up towards the back of the head. The three deep neck muscles will be a contrasting angle going up towards the front of the head. From a front view, only the levator scapulae and the scalenus may be visible and appear as thin cords angling up towards the neck. The sternocleidomastoid, levator scapula, and trapezius overlap in a way to create the profile of the neck. And here are the names of this group of neck muscles. Each of the deep neck muscles have multiple functions on different parts of the body. Let's look at the main movements they create. Because the splenius capitis anchors to the spine and acts on the side of the head, if it contracts, it will pull on the head, turning it sideways. If both sides of the splenius capitis contract together, they will pull the neck and head back. Because the scalenus anchors to the rib cage and acts on the side of the neck, if it contracts, it will bend the neck laterally or to the outside. Because the levator scapulae anchors to the neck and acts on the inside of the scapula, if it contracts, it will lift or levitate the scapula, hence the name levator scapulae. Now let's find the deep neck muscles on the surface. The three deeper neck muscles are only seen between the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius, so it helps to identify them first. This prominent shape here from behind the ear and splitting into two at the bottom is the sternocleidomastoid. On the back of the neck, coming across the shoulder and connecting to the head, is the trapezius. On the side of the neck, in between these two muscles, we can see three diagonal shadows. These are the deep neck muscles. The splenius capitis on top, the levator scapulae in the middle, and the scalenus on the bottom. Notice that the deep neck muscles point up towards the head, countering the angle of the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. This will help us identify them. And here are their names. From a front view, we can see the prominent shape of the sternocleidomastoid here. This line coming from the back of the neck to the shoulder is the trapezius. This highlight and shadow here, right in front of the trapezius, is the levator scapulae. Just in front of that is another highlight and shadow showing the scalenus. While the deep neck muscles are not the most prominent shapes on the surface, it is helpful to know what each shadow indicates when we draw. Remember all of these points when drawing the deep neck muscles. Analyze the anatomy on the surface of your reference and draw from observation and memory to help you learn. Thank you for watching. 
Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.